Now, some of the common uses of radioactive isotopes in the real world involves a plethora of things. But, for example, radioactive unstable isotopes can be used in a process called radioactive dating. And that means carbon, for example, uh, that comes in three forms, carbon-12, 13, and 14. It turns out carbon-14 is an unstable isotope, and it undergoes nuclear decay, radioactive decay. Now, if you have one sample of radiocarbon-14 isotopes, uh, it will decay, uh, half of the amount will decay in about 5,000 plus years. Now, the calculations involved in measuring or calculating the amount of time required for a sample, a particular sample to be half of the amount, is called half-life. And because the rate of decay for radioactive isotopes is quite predictable in the long run, uh, we can use it to date the age of some organic matter, but not dinosaur stuff. But yeah, for wood, you can up to 5,000 plus or so years or more, right? So it can date up to uh, tens and thousands, well, can date up to 60,000 odd years before the sample becomes um, too spur disperse or too little in order to make accurate judgments. All right. Other uses of radioactive isotopes in the real world is nuclear reactors, where uh, nuclear power plants, such as the ones in Russia, France, and the United States, uh, they use this unstable isotope called uranium-235. That isotope is unstable, and when it is bombarded by neutrons, the chain reaction of uh, nuclear fission happens, and when the nuclear fission happens, uh, energy is released in, a f and in the form of all this radiation and heat, and that heat is used to warm up a gas water pipeline that will feed into a turbine that will spin that turbine that will spin an electromagnetic apparatus of some massive size and then electricity is generated yes and this is a very uh, low low polluting method of uh, producing electricity the only thing you have to be worry that you have to worry about is the radioactive waste that comes with it but the amount of radioactive waste that comes with it is not a lot but it's just it's dangerous if something ba boom bad happens yeah i've been on a, in a nuclear power plant and it's pretty cool it's a pretty safe setup it's pretty cool and it's a very efficient way of producing energy anyway electricity Another form of uh, how radioactive isotopes can be used in the real world can be, in, in the med medical field, could be in the form of radiotherapy. Now, radiotherapy is uh, used when you want to bombard certain cancer cells with these radioactive uh, materials. And these radioactive materials will bazoom, kill the cancer cells. Now, it's important that you don't get chemotherapy and radiotherapy mixed up because this one involves the unstable isotopes. So, to kill uh, cancer cells deep within our meat and flesh and skin and bone uh, inside our bodies, you can use cobalt 60 and for skin or surface applications of or, or skin cancer cells and stuff like that, we can use strontium-19. Other uses of radioactive isotopes can be used, uh, radioactive isotopes can be used to detect the water level when you're bottling liquids, whatever that liquid may be. Hopefully it's not drinks. Uh, just kidding. Anyway, 
Uh, it can also be used to detect the thickness of sheets of metal that has been produced by um, a factory. It can also be used to detect cracks and leaks in gas pipelines as the gas that is being transported in pipelines have little bits and pieces of radioactive material. So that's our wrap up on the uses of radioactive isotopes in the real world.